Hey, I'm James from Soaking at Barbecue, and everything that I've cooked direct over a live fire turns out better and with more flavor than anything that I've ever done with an indirect setup. That is, until it didn't. A few weeks ago, I put my Kamado Joe versus my Kamado Joe in a direct versus indirect setup head to head to see what imparts more flavor. There's just a lot of complexity when you go with an indirect setup, whether it's the factory setup or for my best result in a Kamado ever, my double indirect setup, where you're adding every deflector plate or stone or slow roller that Kamado Joe provides in order to help promote a clean burning fire without suffering the consequences of increasing the direct heat underneath our food. And while that is always amazing, it it puzzles me why things like my jotisserie turkeys or chickens or even the live fire beef ribs that I did a year or two ago turn out so amazing. And so I wanted to put this to the test and find out if we're overcomplicating something that just needs to be left simple and cooked directly over the coals versus my double indirect setup. And spoiler alert, if you haven't seen that video, my double indirect ribs trounced the direct ribs for a couple reasons. One, we are barely burning any coals in a direct setup at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So I wasn't able to impart or burn hardly any smoke wood because I was dealing with the efficiency advantage of a Kamado that in this case didn't allow me to impart much smoke flavor. The other issue that I ran into is without our deflector stones there to serve some protection from all that heat radiating directly up from the bottom and escaping out the top bend is I turned the bottom of my ribs into leather. And so this was a pretty epic failure, but I mentioned in that video that I would come back and try again because that result just stood in such a stark contrast to everything else that I've cooked direct. And the only variable between that cook and all the successful cooks direct is this guy, the jotisserie. So if the jotisserie is able to save live fire cooking and once again turn out an amazing result, I think the next thing to tackle here is a more expensive, longer cook like brisket. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see that happen. But now that you know the table stakes and what's in store for today, let's get our ribs out, prep them, as well as fire up our Kamado Joe. Okay, let's get our big Joe ready, clean it out. You can see here I've been testing the kick ash can which collects all of our ash. Let me go dump that out. Drop that back in, aligning the holes with the vent opening down below. Charcoal basket, touch more fogo. Grab our grow blazer grow gun, fire it up. Start a fire nice down low in the center as it will burn to the back. And that'll allow some of the fresh coal to fall on it and constantly feed our fire. Close our dome and build some temp. Bottom vent and top vent are all the way open. Okay, I've already cleaned up a rack of St. Louis ribs as you'll see here in a second when we flip them over on the bottom. I am leaving the membrane on based off of our first experience with direct ribs to see if that'll help. I'll also add a, a chapter at the end of the video. If you've already seen it, there's no sense of watching it again, but this is from my bacon injected ribs. Uh, an amazing method, by the way, is to render down bacon fat and inject it to the ribs. It was amazing flavor. And this is the combination of my favorite things from the Goldies, the Blacks, as well as the Franklin barbecue rubs. So I made up my own concoction, uh, taking my favorite things of each of those rubs and putting it into one. I've been using this on everything pork and brisket lately and the family absolutely loves it. But if you've already seen it, you've already seen it, don't need to watch it again. So that's why it's a chapter at the end of the video. So I've got a little bit of mustard uh, out for a binder. As I mentioned, I've already given these a really quick trim. They came not too bad from the grocery store. There was just, uh, again, a bit more of the flap than I want uh, and a little bit of loose stuff at the end. So I've just grabbed a, a flaying knife and given that a quick little treatment. Let's add some mustard, our dry rub finish what is normally our presentation side, but since this is going to be on the dotisserie, both sides are going to spend an equal amount face up versus face down, but this of course is how we'll serve them. Give the rub a little bit more of a mix with those full size garlic particles as well as hot pepper flakes. Things tend to settle down a little bit, so I give it a mix every time that we reapply. And now for the fun part. I'm not sure if we're going to knead the tongs or if this will just start to spin and tear at the meat. So since I think it will tear at our ribs with the spit down the middle, I've got our tongs to try and help secure the ribs in place. And just a little rub to touch up anything that we might have made it look a little bit messy as we were manhandling these onto our spit. Okay, we've just come up to about 260 degrees. So I wanna slow things down now. So I put the bottom vent down to one finger and the top vent I'm going to put to about an eighth of an inch past the first line. Install our jotisserie. 
to check the spacing on our ribs. So even though I have a, a notch here on the midpoint, I sort of lost sight of where that is. So I need to move these down just a little bit to get them closer to middle. Connect our Jotisserie motor, turn it on, get cooking. Got a mix of apple cider vinegar and water. Let's get a little bit of spray onto our ribs, especially while we're starting this early phase of trying to absorb some of that smoke from our fresh charcoal. Elapsed time at this point is about 45 minutes since we got these on. I'm really just focusing on the ends or anything that looks like it might be drying out. And at this early stage, we don't have anything other than some cooking going on. So that looks pretty good. Close our dome and keep on cooking. Okay, we're coming up to three hours. Let's get a look at our ribs once the smoke clears here. Woo, it's looking good. Also curious where we are from a temperature. About 201, 199, 200. I think we are nearly there. Let me grab our simple syrup that I've made up, which is just one part water, one part sugar. And I'm gonna glaze that on and move to dome open cooking just to finish our ribs. All right, I've got our simple syrup. Let's just squirt some on here. It's handy to have in the fridge for moments like this. So just help give a little bit of sweet finish and a shine. It looks really good. All right, let those finish. Well, these certainly look amazing. Much more promising than our last sort of direct, indirect uh, experiment. It looks like even done this all the way around and the wave from being on the spit was not as bad as I was potentially worried that it's gonna be, but let's see how they actually are in our taste test. So no issue uh, cutting, which is the first sign that we don't have a big problem. Let's get a couple more bones out here. They feel tender. Now, obviously a different cook, different day. Looks very juicy inside. I don't wanna squeeze all that out but immediately the first thing that I can see is a lot less of a smoke ring. So just like before with direct, because we have to manage our fire and aren't able to get as much smoke wood burning, uh, these do seem to have a smoke ring disadvantage, but again, we'll see if that comes through at all in the taste test. They feel incredibly tender. Oh, look at that. Just juices galore. All right, moment of truth, let's dive in. Wow. It's a lot better <laughs> than our last direct. So I don't know if you can see that, but last time on our direct ribs, I wasn't able to come anywhere near the bone without running into at least an eighth of an inch of just leather. No such problems this time around. Nice bite through consistency. Wow. These are good. So mentioned that the smoke ring looked less prominent. Tasting these, there's no clue that there is anything other than great smoke. This is just like every experience I've had with the jotisserie before. So I think maybe it wasn't so much a, a condemnation of the direct cooking. It's more the fact that we weren't spinning and that's what led to the leather-like bottom on our ribs. Everything here is incredibly tender. The smoke from the fat dripping and getting into the coals, coming back up and infusing the flavor has this unique jotisserie experience that I first discovered uh, is amazing on low and slow cooks, traditional low and slow cooks, like when I did my direct live fire beef ribs and I've been applying it to as many things since. So now armed with this, I think we are ready to go back and try again direct versus indirect or perhaps tackle one of the most popular questions I got, which is James, can you cook a brisket direct on the jotisserie? I wanted to try it with the ribs first and see if we could solve some of the issues that we discovered in our direct versus indirect rib battle. But based on the result of these, I feel encouraged enough to go ahead and give that a try. Let me know down in the comments if that's something that you wanna see or let me know in person on one of my monthly member lives where I go live and you can get to hang out and interact with you guys in a real time basis. Discuss what's on your mind, answer questions, as well as just learn from a great community of people getting together and hanging out who are just as passionate about barbecue as I am and I'm sure uh, as are you. That's it for today though. I'm James from Smoking Dead Barbecue signing off. Remember, don't be afraid to fire it up. 
All right, there is a lot going on in front here, but don't worry, we're not gonna use everything. So if you saw my Texas Rub Showdown, I put three of the most popular Texas barbecue joints head to head, starting with Black's, Goldie's, as well as Franklin's. And in the taste test, even though Black's won, there was a little bit of each of these rubs that we really liked. I liked some of the more salt forward flavors that you get on Black's along with what you can see in there, some of the red chili flakes. With the Goldies, a little bit stronger, you know, on the pepper, as well as um, kind of a bit of a Lowry's flavor coming in. And the Franklin's is a two part with salt and pepper on its own, as well as this barbecue rub, which if you were to recreate this, it has a little bit more of a citric acid flavor, which is what I'm gonna get inside the Lowry's. I'll put the make your own Lowry's rub down below, but it has some very similar ingredients. And in terms of the taste test, many people actually thought uh, this was my homemade rub. So that's what we're gonna make up today. I'll put those aside and go for my version. But if you're using any of those three, you're off to a great start. So since we're only doing about four racks, I think I'm gonna start with a couple capfuls of fresh cracked pepper. That should be enough to get us through these four racks. So let's try our hand here with two capfuls of fresh cracked black pepper. I'm using a five peppercorn melody. You can see a little bit of white, red, black pepper. <laughs> I'm not sure what the other two are. It's from uh, Costco, so that's just giving me a couple different spices. You don't need to follow along with a pepper can. I just happen to make my own rubs all the time and you'd be blown away the difference that fresh spices make in your rubs. And since I get about 10 times more pepper per crack, it doesn't take that long. I got a little bit more to go, but we've almost got a full cap right now. So I'll take it fast forward while I get two full caps of fresh cracked black pepper. There's number two. And just looking at the quantity, I know I said two, but I think I'm gonna go for three. It'll also make our ratios easier with the salt. Since I'm gonna do two thirds diamond crystal kosher salt and one third Lowry's, that'll just be a cap of each to get 50-50 salt and pepper. So I'll take you fast forward while I do one last cap full of pepper. All right, that looks good. So we now have our pepper. So we're gonna start with 50-50 salt and pepper, as I mentioned. So let's get out some diamond crystal kosher salt and I'm gonna do two capfuls of this, add that in. And to get to our 50-50 ratio, I will do one capful of Lowry's. And again, if you don't have Lowry's in your area, I'll put how to make your own down in the description. Okay, so we're now a 50-50 salt and pepper rub ratio. I'm gonna add just a couple extra ingredients. I guess I'll save my pepper cannon cap here for measurement, but I'm gonna go sort of two thirds garlic and the rest onion powder give us a little bit of a savory flavor profile. We'll go great with ribs. Next, I'm gonna add just a little bit of color. So I'm gonna go for about a half cap of smoked paprika and then about a quarter cup of cayenne. Might as well add the rest of that since we're almost out. A dash of mustard powder. We're gonna be using mustard as our binder so I don't need to add that much, just enough to cover the top of our paprika and cayenne. And last little bit of space here, I'll sneak in a couple red pepper flakes that'll mix throughout our rub once we give this a good shake. You wanna leave about an inch to an inch and a half, at least at the top. Make sure we have enough space for getting everything to mix together. There's all our layers, let's mix them up. Okay, that's looking good. I might just add in a few more red pepper flakes. Looks like I can get away with a little bit more for that texture, but otherwise I'm really happy with the consistency of our rub. So like I mentioned at the beginning, this is a mixture of all three. You can see a couple again of those red pepper flakes along with a lot more salt and the black shrub. So we've got for a bit of a blend taking the pepper flakes from blacks. We've got a little bit more of that color from the Franklin's and getting some of that citric acid uh, or acidity in our rub flavor that everyone really liked uh, in this one. And then I've gone for a coarser, I don't have much left of the, uh, of the Goldies, but a coarser grain pepper uh, than something that you might get just uh, out of the bag. So we get a little bit more of that texture and people really like the texture of the Goldies rub. So now that we've got our rub ready, let's get our ribs out of the pack and start to uh, trim them up and get our rub on.